the government, the minister has just said, the government is operating under the rule of law. Some of us believe that's not true anymore. We need advice as individual members, separate from government, and that's the responsibility of the Speaker, to ensure that we're properly advised about our responsibilities when we believe there's the potential complicity in war crime. Point of order, John McDonald. And I've sat through the statement this morning and listened to the various questions that have been raised with regard to the supply of arms to Israel. It's quite clear the government is continuing to supply arms to Israel, mm. some of which will have been used on the attacks on Gaza, some of which of those attacks have been judged to be contrary to the ICJ judgment and they're potentially war crimes. Can I ask the Speaker, therefore, to seek and publish legal advice on the legal responsibilities of individuals of this House in holding the government to account to prevent complicity in those war crimes and so that we're all aware of our responsibilities and the role that we have to play as this government receives its authority from this chamber. Well, I thank the right honourable um, gentleman for his point of order. Um, he didn't give me notice of it, so I have not been um, uh, able to perhaps seek advice on the legal point that he raises, which um, uh, I am unclear on whether he is asking the Speaker to publish legal advice, which I'm not sure would be, if the right honourable gentleman would like. Apologise, I couldn't give the yes, Deputy Speaker notice because literally this statement has only just concluded and it came out of the statement itself. I'm asking for the Speaker to seek legal advice on our behalf and to publish that legal advice because I think it's important that we all know our legal responsibilities in respect of the potential complicity of this government in war crimes. Well, my initial response would be um, that obviously um, the Minister has come here, has answered a number of questions um, with regard to um, the issues that he raises. Um, I, I feel that he is indicating that he perhaps may be able to help me out a little in terms of um, legal advice, but um, I feel it would be, it feels highly unusual for the Speaker to seek legal advice on an issue affecting the government, because the government obviously gets its own legal advice, but perhaps we could hear from the Minister before we go any further. Thank you very much, Madam Deputy. Further to that point of order, the Right Honourable Gentleman is an extremely experienced member of this House, and he is seeking to continue the subject of the urgent question uh, ingeniously in, in what he says. He knows perfectly well, uh, Madam Deputy Speaker, that the government operates under a rule of law when it comes to arms sales, the arms regime, the work of the Arms uh, Inspection Committee. Uh, those are matters all determined by the law of the land. And when it comes to international humanitarian law, the position is precisely the same. The government takes advice from the law officers who are charged with these matters and who uh, advise the government, and the government acts upon that advice. That, if, if I may just say, that is rather the point I was uh, trying to make, but obviously the Minister, um, uh, who is, um, uh, I'm sure, very often working with legal advisers, um, was able to answer it much more um, uh, coherently than I was. Um, so I, I'm not sure we can, we can pursue this much further, but I will let the Right Honourable Gentleman have one more go, but I think we've sort of reach the end of, um, uh, of, of the questioning after this. I'm not seeking to extend the debate at all. This is an incredibly serious point. The government, the minister has just said, the government is operating under the rule of law. Some of us believe that's not true anymore because of the way the ICJ judgment was phrased. And therefore, we need advice as individual members, separate from government, and that's the responsibility of the Speaker, to ensure that we're properly advised about our responsibilities when we believe there's the potential complicity in war crime. All I'm seeking is that advice is sought and published. Well, as I say, I, I think, the, first of all, the government uh, performs within the legal advice that it is receiving, um, not least from the Attorney General. Um, there are separate, obviously, legal proceedings going through the um, ICG, and I don't think it would be 
um, for uh, members of this House to be interfering in that process either. Um, the right honourable gentleman will know that obviously <coughs> individual members of the House have the right to seek legal advice. I will, obviously his comments uh, will have been heard um, and if there is anything further to be added to them, I know that the clerks will advise us whether uh, we should return to this, <coughs> but I think it would be highly unusual, the, the uh, right on the gentleman's request um, in terms of um, specific legal advice to the speaker. If there is anything I need to add to that, I can assure the right honourable gentleman I will come back to him. <laughs>